playing a great up-and-comer, another young, young athlete that is putting themselves up near the front. Andrea Sear, leader of ACC, placing fifth last night, and then Stephanie Holloma in sixth. Riley McMullen, Alexis Ryan, Daphne Caraganas, and Skylar Schneider rounding out the top ten in our standings. We're about to start our pro women's race here tonight for the FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium. This is the second night of racing for our Tulsa Tough weekend of racing. Now, Daniel, you've won this race a number of times, haven't you? I have, <laughs> yeah. Uh, mostly just, you know, uh, finding, you know, the most speed out of last corner, um, you know, taking that run to the finish line. A little bit of forecasting. We're gonna see what uh, what we have in tap for tonight. Because Daniel, there are a number of different tactics can, that can take place in this event. What's your over-under on the possibility of something like a breakaway uh, being successful here tonight? Um, in this field, I think there's a, you know, a good chance if kind of the right players get up the, the field and really work together. I think um, with the size of our field and the, the number of players that are here, it's only going to take you know, four or five, you know, maybe six of the right riders to you know, get off the Get off, the, get off the front and start working together. And we are racing. We are now on course. We've got our leader's jersey for Tulsa Tough there with Olivia Cummins in that pink jersey as she comes around. A Legion of Los Angeles coming out behind us right now in those blue jerseys. Remember, Legion racing in a new kit for St. Francis Tulsa Tough this season in an homage to Justin and Corey Williams High School in Compton. There was their high school colors, and so they wanted to pay tribute to that. We're actually racing uh, near Black Wall Street here in Tulsa tonight. So this is a, a very uh, special event for Legion of Los Angeles as a team overall. Of course, they're going to be looking to get themselves a race win tonight. Yeah, and they've had great success on this course as well. Um, oh, you know, over the last few years, Justin's won it. Uh, I believe Corey's won it. Um, Sam, Skyler both, you know, know this course very, very well uh, to have, you know, a variety of ideas, tactics on, on how to be successful. Tonight. We're going to see other teams coming up to the front, though. We see those green jerseys of L.A. Sweat coming up. Uh, Emily Flynn there in the middle right now. We're going to see if L.A. Sweat will get themselves into the, some action here. But DNA Pro Cycling, of course, going to all be in the pink jerseys. Olivia Cummins in the leader's pink jersey for tonight. And we'll see if they are able to find themselves off the front. Right now we're going through an Ed Red Bull arch. So as you guys see that Red Bull arch at home, just know that that's basically coming back downhill, right? So as we're coming uphill, we have a few turns. We have a left, we got a right, we go past Sound Pony. Then we turn left again. That's sort of the top plateau, if you will. You pass underneath the Red Bull arch, then come downhill. This camera shot here shows you what that elevation change is. And then this will be the final turn. And this is generally where Daniel would recommend what? What would you recommend in this final turn when we're at the end of the race? Things are single file, not spread out as we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, I found really great success going around the outside in this sprint. You know, there's plenty of room. The exit is super, super wide. Um, it's wider than it feels necessarily going into that with the, all the speed in the downhill. But a lot of guys, you know, as we can always see, protect the inside and that outside lane is open that if you can get your run right, get your time right, when you meet kind of those inside riders at the apex, you're just carrying so much more speed as you're not fighting for anything on the inside. So if you can kind of nail that timing right, get get onto the home stretch with all your momentum. You know, as we've seen before, you, if you if you have that gap, you can do you know quite a bit of an early celebration and, and make great photos. <laughs> How many great photos did you get out of this race, Daniel? Four, maybe five. It's, maybe five. You know, it's like, um, I'm just going to keep asking you until I actually remember. I've been um, asking you all day. How many times did you win this race? Are you just, we haven't figured that one out yet. We'll figure it out. Right now, we got the pink helmets of Miami Blazers on the front and the Trinidad and Tobago national champion, Alexi Ramirez, is on the front. Great to have Alexi racing with us here in Tulsa. Now it's just her and uh, Maria Gaxola representing Miami Blazers in these race weekends with us, but you always find them with the pink helmets. The men are also we we wearing pink helmets, so they will be distinctive and hopefully easy to find in our peloton. So we're now getting through our second lap here. It looks to me like race dynamic. We have two teams up near the front. We have Legion in the blue and then DNA in the pink. Uh, maybe it looks like InstaFund there in the middle, trying to put themselves up near the front. And now I also see Miami Knights and Sinistra. Yeah, I mean, with DNA having the leader's jersey uh, on Olivia Cummins' back is 
they are going to have you know a little more responsibility taking initiative to be you know m significantly more present than they were last night um you know when you carry that leader's jersey it, it, you can't take the responsibility on setting the pace but also when you get your team up there you know it's just a safe spot for your livid to be and just kind of your whole team to be together um and when you can see that they've kind of taken that role kind of integrating with legion um you know at the front of the field and you know legion doesn't seem to be taking as much of a heavy hand as they did, you know, last night um, so far in tonight's course. Yeah, Prem on this next lap, Prem on the next lap. Uh, Frankie, Andrea, and Rosam Bahati are going to be your stage commentators this evening, and they're calling out the Premes. That's up to them to decide when those are going to be rung. And right now, they have decided that this is a good time for a Prem lap. So, uh, Skyler on the front right now. Skyler Schneider, your Pan Am Continental Champion, racing with us here in St. Francis Tulsa Tough FC. The Tulsa Arts District Criterium here tonight. She is on the front right now. Let's see if Legion is going to continue to stay up near the front. Now, last night uh, we saw you just mentioned the what you, you described as a heavy-handed approach on the Legion tactic, which was to, I believe, just to be at the front is what you were talking about. Let's see if that changes at all here with these a lot more pedaling, a lot more shifting in tactics. This is a completely different course. Yeah, I mean, it's significantly more elevation, you know, less turns, you know, less opportunities to coast and recover. Um, and, it, you know, overall, the course is going to be a bit wider. So there's going to be, you know, more availability to move around the peloton for uh, riders to kind of go from the middle of the field to the front of the field with a bit more ease and comfort than on a tighter, more turny course that we saw last night. We got a Denver Disruptors on the front right now. We'll try to get that number here in a second. The Denver Disruptors and CCB, I believe, are uh, up in the front on this preem lap. We will see who's going to collect a preem here this evening, all looking at each other, and they're waving it through. Maybe they don't know it's a preem lap. Pop money on the line, and there goes CCB trying to jump out and see if they can get themselves a preem. $200 apparently, according to Frankie. $200, nothing to shake your fist at. And as they come across the line, we'll see who got that preem. I believe CCB with Catherine Rush grabbing and that preem. Now it's great to see some of these smaller teams, you know, CCB, La Sweat, Sinsica, um, you know, get lined up in the front in front of these some of the largest teams. And now they just really need to kind of be confident and start being a little more active. And when the pace is up like this, if, you know, the larger teams want to get to the front, they've got to poke out and spend some more energy than if you just sit up and accelerate and it balloons out, you know, all those, the larger teams can just coast to the front. So the smaller teams can use that as a way to make the larger teams work. Um, you know, when it's strung out, don't just sit up, you know, keep the pace going. And, it, you know, if the larger teams, better riders want to get to the front, they're going to have to work for it. And now we see Harriet Onan, um, off, you know, starting to chase be a lot more active than we saw last night. I think that was Andrea Sear that was uh, from Miami Knights countering. Last night she was very uh, conservative, I would say, actually, just sitting in trying to protect her leader's jersey for ACC. Tonight she's not wearing that jersey. This is not an ACC event, so perhaps a little bit of a shift in the tactics and aggression for Miami Knights. As we see, we've got ourselves the, these great drone shots throughout the night, thanks to Helmeric and Payne, but thanks to them for supporting us with our St. Francis Tulsa Tufts. Emily Flynn in that old green jersey in the middle there, and we'll see which one of our orange shoulders of Sineska is gonna be up near the front as well. Catherine Sarkasov had a great ride last night, finishing in fourth. That was a very young and up-and-coming rider. She races a lot of cyclocross with uh, Bill Shikin's uh, cyclocross development program, the truck program, I believe. And, you know, to see her getting fourth at a race like last night, I mean, I think I think she's under 20 years old, right? So we had Olivia Cummins, who's fresh off of Lux, and then uh, Catherine Sarkasov in fourth. I mean, to me, that shows a lot of great potential for the sport. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really great to see some, you know, U23 or like, you know, with these two women, you know, under 20. Some, you know, 19-year-olds really breaking into the top five uh, at this level event. Not only big, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of, um, you know, feeling surrounded, but they're also racing some really, really good other riders. So um, it's so great to see some young riders like that already at the pointy end of the race, getting those results, um, figuring out, you know, trusting themselves to kind of get stuck in when it's, um, you know, in those sprints. Sometimes it can take, you know, a long time to get comfortable in those high-speed technical finishes. So at their age to already see, 
you know, see them get stuck in is, is really good. And, you know, Olivia, I think, has been here. This is her fifth year. So she's got, a, you know, is built to that point. She's at that culmination point, even at such a young age. It's like, I've got the experience. I've got the fitness. Now I can shift my goals to winning rather than just learning and, and slowly working up. She's up, you know, she's wearing the jersey. She wants to keep it. So it's, um, you know, really excited to kind of see how that plays out. And then the Sinska rider really see how she, you know, can, um, you know, grow over the three days. Is it, you know, one good race or can she put two good races together, three good races to keep her uh, position up there in the top five. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Right now, we've got a Denver Disruptor off the front. According to my start sheet is Ava Hawkman from uh, Denver, Colorado, at least according to our start sheet here, although they all appear to be from Denver on the old start sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so this is like, um, you know, this is a downhill, and it can be, if you get too complacent, by you know, the uphill being clearly difficult, you have to pedal a lot, the plateau. If just from the top corner, you think that coasting is your best option to recover, you can lose a lot of ground, surprisingly. Typically, it's a headwind, um, you know, going down the hill. So you have to be very cognizant to keep pedaling, uh, to keep your momentum, so your gap stays. All that work you did on the uphill, you have to fight for it, even on the downhill to maintain it. Uh, Frankie's ringing the bell for another preem lap. So we have $300 preem on the line, a $300 preem, according to uh, what we overheard that Frankie saying. And we have, again, Ava Hockman. So the pedaling on this course is really deceptive. So obviously there's there's going to be a pedaling when we're going up incline. So out of between turns one and two, that's a definite uh, incline. It's it's small, but it, it's like the um, sort of the final 50 meters-ish of last night, right? And then we have this incline here when you go by Sound Pony. Between, yeah. And yeah, then, I mean, none of this course is dead flat, okay. you know, or very, very little. You know, on the home stretch, yeah. One to two, uphill. Two to three, you know, you're gaining elevation. It may not be much, but it's enough that you can't coast and keep the same speed. If you coast, you're gonna you're gonna start slowing down. And then, you know, clearly, corner three, right turn, uphill through the Sound Pony. And then between four and five, you know, is another basically flat. The road crowns just a touch, but you know, um, it, it's not enough that you can coast comfortably. No. And then left, you know, downhill all the way into corner six. But with it being a headwind, it's not a free ride. You got to earn, you still have to earn it. Yeah, and we're looking at the, just the really different dynamic from what I'm seeing tonight. So we have one rider off the front from Denver Disruptors, $300 premium on the line at the moment. And look at the field shape behind. Everybody's pedaling downhill. And as we saw in that uh, closing shot off of through the Red Bull Arch, just a few shots ago, that we also saw that the back of the field is already splintering. I see Stephanie Hollemack there for United Cycling up near the front, and then it looks like an InstaFun rider and LA Sweat trying to go for the preem. We'll see if they catch and make the line, and ooh, and there it is, InstaFun, getting themselves $300 richer on that last preem lap. And that's like a, a, an example of kind of what could potentially happen in the finish if there's a slow solo rider off in the, in the last lap is, you know, her, her gap at the top of the hill, you know, was pretty good. And if she, you know, fatigued legs, even on the downhill, is not able to just continue putting power down, that gap, you can start losing it pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, the gaps evaporate instantaneously on yeah. this course. It's crazy. That was Cassie Hicks of InstaFund collecting a $300 preem from the announcers, Frankie Andreo and Rosan Bahati. Making the right turn, big thanks again to Helmeric and Payne for our drone shots. Great, always great to have this perspective on the field because sometimes with the cameras it can be really challenging to see the um, sort of just race dynamic with the foreshortening of the lens. And when you get this shot here, you can see just how fast some of the riders are going as we pan along with them. You can see the fragmenting of pace at the back. And you can see the rider body language. They're out of the saddle even, pedaling pretty hard off over the top of this course. Yeah, so if you're towards the back third of this race and you've gone up the hill and over the top, if there's gaps, you know, the, the front 15, 20 riders, by the time they get to the, the Red Bull Arch, they can kind of take a breather. They can coast, you know, kind of look around, take a couple deep breaths. But if you're in the back third, back 20 riders, and you're gapped, you've got to pedal that whole time. There's no, you don't get that same 10, 10 pedal stroke re reprieve that those front riders do. And that, if you're just kind of stuck there, that's going to wear on you very, very fast. And we're going to start seeing riders come off the back lap after lap by not being able to find any space to recover. Yeah, and I think that when you see nice aggressive tactics here by DNA Pro Cycling, 
uh, you're going to see a lot of fatigue in the legs start to occur here because just as riders have come down off the downhill and now onto the flat and as they come by us here in turn one, Rachel Langdon there on the front for DNA Pro Cycling coming by, or is that Holly? Actually, might have been Holly Breck. Uh, coming by us there in turn number one. Butcher box right on the wheel, but you see the shape of the field. Single file up near the front. Now we get about three wide pretty quickly towards the back. So we're, we're not quite ramped up yet, but we are starting to see changes in pace and a little bit more dynamic racing at the front. Yeah, and this is, you don't want to wait. If you're a, a team or a rider that, you know, wants to use the hill as an inflection point to change or try to create space, the hill's not long enough to wait to be on the hill to start your attack. You have to start, you know, your acceleration out of two or halfway between two and three. You already have to get the field strung out. That way, by the time when you hit the climb and you add pace, it's single file and gaps can start to open. You don't want to go to the bottom of the field slow with everybody bunched together, do a big attack because by the time you get to the top, it's going to be single file and everybody's going to have the draft and then everybody's going to be able to, you know, across the plateau down the hill. So you got to inject that pace before you get to the climb. Denver Disruptors on the front right now really trying to drive this pace. We believe that's Nara Nuno from Denver Disruptors now working with DNA Pro Cycling rider Daphne Caraganas. We believe and we have another rider inserting themselves into the mix here. We're going to get that rider ID. I think it is a butcher box athlete wearing one of our Tulsa jerseys with the all blue. Uh, so we'll get some race numbers for you as we see who that is. We'll look in the gap. We're trying to get some gaps here as we see this race dynamic starting to shift here a little bit. Um, but nice sort of aggressive tactics with three riders away right now. The Denver Disruptors, DNA Pro Cycling. And it is a butcher box rider not wearing a number. So that rider with the uh, with the blue Tulsa Tough jersey, unfortunately not wearing their race number this evening. So if uh, if you guys know who that is, feel free to shoot us a message. I'm at the Gabe Lloyd on Instagram. Daniel is d.hollywood on Instagram. And if you know uh, who that is, just shoot us a message. We will give them the their due credit for making it this far into this race. Alexis Ryan from Legion of Los Angeles. Uh, has made the junction and we have a Miami Knights rider. And yeah, we can see Salazar just kind of setting a false tempo, you know, at the front. And it seems like the sweat or not. So excuse me, LA Legion is, is kind of OK with allowing this gap to to go out a little bit, uh, potentially call the bluffs of some of these other teams that may have missed it or may not like the particular rider that's that's in that move. So we have Holly Breck. Um, oh, now it's just kind of two riders splintering. But that's Holly Breck, uh, Alexis Ryan. Yeah, we're going to try to uh, just identify all these riders that are in the move here. And there's not much action coming from the field. It seems like kind of everybody's represented, um, you know, kind of like they need to be. I, th I guess Miami Knights might have have missed this. And so th those riders in the breakaway have to kind of recognize this and keep the pace up and not make it so easy for this Knights rider to just, you know, close, th close that gap. Already we're seeing Denver Disruptors now cutting across the road, though, and trying to uh, make this make this move stick even a little bit more. We got our drone shot here and looking for our turn one. So we come around our there we are. So we're all back together with our breakaway. Looks like disruptors. Holly Breck. And we can see number 47 in the mix here as well. Not on our start sheet for the evening. So we will again try to get you some identification from that InstaFund rider. That InstaFund rider might be Helena, Helena Coney from InstaFund. All right, Helen Mc Helena Coney. So we're in a different number from last night. And that's great to see, though, Helena Coney making her way to the front of this race here this evening as we have a nice dynamic race starting to shape up here. And this butcher box 
Ryder again finding themselves in the split, so perhaps finding ourselves a nice, accurate, uh, aggressive race, it's courtesy of Butcher Box Pro Cycling. But you see that the field is really not giving them any type of leash at all whatsoever. I mean, the, we've kind of few gaps here and there, but the reintegration of these splits and breakaways is not successful thus far. We have about 19 minutes of racing elapsed in the overall. And, uh, you know, I think that we're starting to see we're, I, we're seeing the teams that are interested in being at the front. Yeah, we're seeing a lot more teams um, and, and riders more active than we saw uh, you know, last night's race. And, and that overhead shot from the drone, we could kind of see the front of the peloton was a bit of an arrow. Single file, then started to arrow out, you know, start to triangle, and then the, there's a string of riders behind. That shows that the pace has been hard, as, you know, like I've kind of discussed before, is if you're in those top 15, 20 wheels, you can find moments to rest, coast, breathe a little bit. But if you're back that you're single file, and if you're further back, you know, the, the gaps are starting to open, you never get to rest. So you've got to find yourself in that in that arrow to, to be able to find spaces to rest. If not, you're always chasing into the back of that. And more often than not, you just make it into the back of that 20 riders, and then somebody attacks off the front, somebody sets pacing, and it strings out. And you never get to take those five, ten, you know, pedal strokes off and let your body recover. And that can just add up race after race, or lap after lap, especially on a course that has a hill, where, you know, even if you're riding 25 miles an hour, the same person in the front is doing the same power in the back. You know, you're starting to eliminate draft, mm -hmm. you know, when you start going uphill, right. to a degree. To a degree. We're gonna see the race dynamics sort of shifting a little bit here right now, as we have riders trying to recover at speed as they are Assessing their options. We have Emily Flynn for the LA Sweat program on the front there next to some InstaFund riders. Looks like um, Harriet Owen up near the front as well right now. For DNA Pro Cycling, that is. So Harriet finding herself near the front. Traditionally a sprinter, but perhaps working for Olivia this evening. Yeah, and we, as we kind of just saw going up the hill, the, the, the group was really spread out across the road. You know, up the hill is, is pretty wide. And into that corner, it really pinches down. You lose about 30%, 40% of the, the road width. And so if you're kind of on the outside of that group and there's riders coming underneath, you know, the it's, everything's going to flow outside. If you're, so if you're too far out and you're too close to those barriers, it can, be a, it can be a pinch point. And you either catch yourself in the barrier, unfortunately, or you have to grab a lot of brakes, go back to a low speed, and then accelerate again. So it's being really mindful to set yourself up um, and, and give yourself some space so when it pinches, you kind of have somewhere to go and you, you can keep as much speed and momentum as possible. I'm seeing a lot of washing machine effect here. You, oh, and we got Ryder down in the middle of the uh, field there. DNA Let's, Ryder? Yeah, we're going to have to see who that is. It was an interesting moment there for that to occur. It didn't look like too much was going on, but, oh, man, we got Riders left to right here on this track. Everybody looks to be okay, uh, but we're going to try to get ourselves sorted here. I'm trying to get some ID now. It looks like the front of the race here, uh, be, still being dri driven by CB, CCB Racing at the moment, but we're trying to get some eyeballs on what's going on, and then we'll see all those riders head on out to the pit, the neutral pit. A little bit of a replay here. Strange moment there, where a little bit of crossing of the wheels uh, by one of the riders on our right, cutting across to the left, and then just sort of domino effect across the entire race. Yeah, it looks like that it might have been a DNA rider that kind of got, you know, overlapped with the wheel, tried to catch herself, and as soon as that wheel cleared, all of her momentum went back into the field. Um, and, you know, clearly if the rider wasn't, you know, anticipating that, it happens so fast, and a chain reaction happens. Yeah, we still have a rider down, in a way. We'll have to see, maybe that was old footage, but... Um the riders are just up at the top of the course, and we are they're about to turn left to go down the course. I think they might be neutralizing the race here. Okay. We'll see. It looked like she was stuck in her pedals or, you know, something. Mm -hmm. um, but now... That is a DNA rider. The, the bike is no longer there, so... Okay. Trying to get some numbers here for you all, just so you know who it is. Might have been Amy Gamelgard, number 38, potentially. Yep. And so we are neutralizing the race. Going to bring it down. So we're going to make sure everybody is going to be taken care of here appropriately. I believe that's number 38, which would be 
Um, we're going to get you some ideas on that because that does not match. I just heard over the uh, race er, from Frankie Andreu, actually, that might have been Rachel Langdon, who is the rider who has gone down. So Rachel Langdon, potentially the rider who has gone down. That would be number 35, according to our start sheets. Hard to tell when the numbers are a little crumpled up there. Rachel, one of their big, important riders on that team. Rachel is an absolute workhorse. She's also super aggressive. She sweeps up preems. She did that last night. Um, and, you know, she's a really crucial component of sort of winding up the speed at the end of the race to try to drop off some of their sprinters, whether it's Harriet or Olivia. Yeah, she's like, you know, one of the elder riders in the group, a lot of experience, you know, and I would go that she would, you know, be the, the road captain, uh, you know, of that program, you know, the one that's making those decisions on the fly in the course, you know, not necessarily talking over the radio, but, you know, ear to ear, you know, with um, the other teammates. Um, you know, kind of calling the shots and asking for help. So we'll see right now we have a rider down on course. We believe it is Rachel Langdon. That is unconfirmed. So we will get that confirmation for you as soon as we can. She has gone down. When when she went down, whole field uh, went down. Well, a lot of the riders went down across the road with her. But unfortunately, Rachel Langdon unable to get up. And uh, because she was unable to get up and clear the course, of course, the race officials have paused the race at this time. So all the riders are neutralized and we are waiting for confirmation that Ra Rachel is okay. Uh, we had a number of activations here at the St. Francis Tulsa Tough, and this morning we kicked off with our Fondo races. We've got a great show here, a uh, little script here for you guys to check out and see all the fun that our Fondo riders had today. Yeah, so grandos are grand finals are such great events. They bring, you know, those people that haven't quite, you know, put their foot into the race scene. Um, you know, gives them the chance to ride in larger groups. Um, a lot of camaraderie that goes on. Um, you know, it, you can make it as competitive or not as competitive a, as you want it to be. You can find those riders that are in your skill set um, and around your your level to go out and have a have a great time. Yeah, Fondos are such a great experience. Now, the interesting thing about this Fondo here, they've got something called the Ace Ride, which is an opportunity for riders who may be a little bit more competitive, want to win themselves an Ace jersey. And uh, I think it's a great uh, addition to the Fondo format where you can come out and you can ride at your own leisurely pace if you want to. But if you have a motivation to go fast, the Ace jersey and the Ace Ride is something that you can join into. So do check that out at TulsaTough.com. Sign yourself up for next year because that is a great opportunity. Looks to me like our race is back on the start finish line on our monitors here, which means that Rachel uh, has been cleared again. We will confirm that is, that is in fact Rachel for you when we know. Uh, we do hope that of course all the athletes are okay. We never want to see somebody go down and be unable to return to the course. Yeah, I mean, it, the crashes happen so fast and you know, it may be low speed and sometimes those are the worst crashes. You just fall so funny. So hopefully that it's, you know, um, she took caution, you know, felt the impact and, you know, didn't just race up to her bike, you know, and, and cause some shock. And she said, hey, you know, this doesn't feel right. I'm just, it's okay for me to just stay here and get the help that she needs. And sometimes you're just better off to do that instead of just jump right back on your bike and, you know, tweak something even more, or cause more damage or, you know, even feel like you are you feel really good, get back on the bike, and then all of a sudden, a couple laps later, everything just starts really going sideways, and you become, you know, just, uh, you know, not, you shouldn't be in the field at that point. So it looks, you know, with Rachel's experience, that may have been the decision she was making there in the moment, and waited for help, and, you know, 
got herself taken care of. We're racing now again. We got 15 laps to go. 15 laps remaining now in this bike race. Looks to me when we did that little slow pan shot across the front of the field that uh, Langdon was not present. But again, that is unofficial. So uh, we will do our best to confirm that for you as soon as we know it. Looks like our restart here. You got Denver Disruptors taking it to the front of the field. Nice single file action here. Perhaps the the fall in the field that was due to a little bit slower speed motivated the field to accelerate a little bit. Speed is your friend. Speed is fast and um, fast is safe oftentimes in these races. Yeah, when it's single file, you know, one person can overlap a wheel and go down, but most, more often than not, it can end up in just one rider. But when it's bunched up and it's going slower, if somebody falls in the middle of the field or on the edge, it can cause a really similar dyna, you know, uh, domino effect that we just kind of saw happen there. And so typically after a crash like that, a neutralization, you know, the, the emotions go up, some of the anxiety goes up uh, while you wait and clear. And then, you know, a lot of people just like to go, hey, I just, let's try to make it single file for the, the rest of the race. Yeah. And with uh, CCB being nice and aggressive here tonight, they came to us with Lizzie Gonzalez, Natalie Quinn, Catherine Rush, Kate Seeler, and, and so it looks like to me from my start list, we only have those riders in this field. Relatively small team organization here for CCB. Nice of them to come to us from mainly New England, although it looks like Natalie Quinn coming to us from Harrisville, Utah. Denver Disruptors on the front one more time with our aggressive tactics near a Nuno, we believe is our, our aggressive rider. Then setting the speed up near the front, cutting across the road. We're not seeing the full team commit though to these aggressive tactics, but we're hearing a $200 preem being called. $200 preem for the winner of the next lap. Hopefully that'll keep their speeds nice and high. You can see the race dynamic now clearly very different from what we saw uh, about two laps ago. Yeah, it's really stringing out. You can see just the total length of the peloton becoming 30, 40, 50 meters long um, as you're, you know, they're starting to get, you know, only one, two, you know, maybe three wide in, in, in points. Single file right now. We're going to see a number of different teams coming to the front for a $200 premium. That's always great to hear the um, that money being delivered into the women's peloton. All these women are here to race their bikes, and many of them do depend on winning that prize money. So. The opportunities have now been presented. Hopefully they will do their best to get themselves up to the front first. And hopefully teamwork will be a piece of that puzzle. We see Miami Knights now coming to the front. They have a very fast kick in on Andrea Sear. This looks to be like Andrea Butine coming to the front right now. And we'll see if Miami Nice can hold on here. They got two at the front, both checking the left shoulder as they came up and around. Now we're still kind of a long way as we've seen in earlier sprints, both in the amateur race and earlier in this women's pro race, the advantages of riders can quickly evaporate and the sprint can be a little deceptive. I, and so if you're a first wheel out of the final turn, do you think you can hold it to the finish line? If you carry momentum, okay. You know, if you're one of those guys that's on the inside fighting, and you you have to, because you're inside, you know, you might lose two, three pedal strokes going because you know, going into that corner because you're too narrow and you just have to set it up. Whereas if you're wide, you can go get deeper, you can carry more speed and have a wider apex and carry more speed. So um, you can, if you carry a lot of momentum, you can go through first. You know, and it's about 150 to the line. Um, okay. And so with a lot of speed, it can carry you pretty far down before you, quote, have to really get on the pedals. Um, but if you go inside and you don't carry maximum speed, a rider that can come from third, fourth wheel that takes a really good line and carry momentum, really go for it. Now here, I think Skylar Schneider uh, hitting out uh, with one of her teammates and another rider going across. And this is really going to... You know, maybe catch some teams off guard. The gap mm -hmm. has gone out pretty quickly. So let's see how this works out the next lap or even how it changes over the top of the field. I believe that's a DNA rider. Yeah, that was great to that, see. Yeah, that I believe those are the chains of Skylar. That's she, Daphne. And Daphne of DNA coming up to that move. So Daphne Caraganis responding to the acceleration of Skylar Schneider wearing number one. Now we have another Legion rider coming up. A little hard for us to see here, but... It looks like with the shadows and the brights and the lights, everything, the contrast can be a little bit challenging. 
on this end, but we definitely have a separation at the front. We definitely have at least two clearly separated and with uh, Daphne from DNA and Skylar. An Instafund mm -hmm. rider, Miami Knights rider, and Salazar just kind of closing that group to those, that group up there with Leah Kirkman. So, um, you know, here's a good heads up rider by Boutine, I think, to carry, do a little counter attack, and carry some momentum to try to close that gap. If Boutine can get there, that would be good. Uh, it looks like she's got a little bit of daylight, but maybe four bike lengths. Yeah, but if she carries momentum, she, the, that gap can close pretty quick. And if, yeah, the field just kind of sits up and close, she can close that gap pretty quick. Um, and you kind of need to on this course is get to that move quick before um, it draws out. And now she is countering that move. Mm, that's great to see Andrea Boutine of Miami Knights countering it. And Skylar responds as she jumps across out of the saddle a little bit. And she quickly gets into the draft there. Boutine wants this collaboration. And we now have three together. Andrea Boutine of Miami Knights. Skylar Schneider of Legion of Los Angeles and Daphne Caraganis of DNA Pro Cycling. Yeah, and this is, you know, three big teams that if they just start work together, you can start, you know, carrying momentum. You start carrying momentum, you got, you know, now you have two riders to recover instead of just one rider to recover. And now there's less teams, you know, the more teams that are represented, there's less teams chasing in the back. Uh, we're going to confirm that it was Rachel Langdon who went down and was uh, unable to continue in the race. Hopefully that is only for tonight. We'd love to see her be able to participate at Crybaby Hill. Rachel having a lot of resurgence in her form and her racing after some surgeries and whatnot this past season. So uh, unfortunate night for Rachel Langdon, but also unfortunate night for DNA Pro Cycling by losing Langdon as she is an essential component of their lead out train. Looks like DNA, though, is going to bring the race back up and around. They are now countering this move, and That's that Harriet. is Harriet Owen. And it's a really good move. I like when it came back together, she didn't hesitate to just launch again, you know, because when you launch right away, it leaves those tired riders at the front, and if they kind of disperse, you know, they can kind of get in the way of people chasing, um, you know, and, and disrupt the chase. You know, for Harriet, that means that gap can go out quickly. Uh, it takes wire riders to reshuffle a little bit. And then all of a sudden that gap's out there, and then when there is daylight for some of your chase, they may go, oh, that's a little bit too big of a gap. I'm not going to take the chance. And now we can see that she's timed this really well. Yeah. There's some fatigue in the peloton. The gap has really gone out, um, you know, quite fast. This is great to see Harriet Owen uh, from uh, Southern England. Right now she's been racing with us in America for a number of years. She was on the Hug and Birdman program for a, for a little while. She bounced around after that, and now she's on DNA Pro Cycling. And she's getting herself some good team support thanks to that program. And right now she is here racing her bike. She has got herself a nice healthy advantage. From the field, we have Emily Flynn of LA Sweat. But right behind Emily, we have Holly Kim Lucci. Kim Lucci. Your yeah, Kim's just got to sit there and float. She's, you know, if they ask her to flick through, you know, the kind of the appropriate thing is like, you got to come through a little bit. You don't have to inject speed, but you don't just sit there. You know, you want to, it doesn't help yourself to just sit up and, because it allows a swarm and you can lose position or give a chance. You, you want it kind of this false tempo to be set, be present, um, and, and, and things like that. But now it's DNA's got to call the bluff. Yeah. You know, um, other teams, you know, would probably, you know, if I was on the another team that wasn't Legion, I'd be saying, hey, it's Legion's job, it's Legion's job. Take that risk to let the gap go out, you know, get bigger. And that means that it's going to take longer and more energy for Legion to, to, to bring that back. And that's only going to help your squad you know, lessen those numbers and give you a chance to come over the top or, you know, leave one of their sprinters for a, a really long sprint. And it looks like Legion is now responding to the threat there by Harriet Owen. Owen's cadence dropping a little bit more than in the previous lap, but hopefully she can stay on the power here and uh, use a little bit of track background to get herself on top of those pedals as long as she can. She is checking the shoulder, though. She sees the lion train coming as they come down on her. Uh, Yoreli Salazar, your... 2021 Mexican Road Race National Champion doing the work to bring that back. Salazar, one of the key neutralizers for Legion of Los Angeles. We saw this a lot last night, and here she is one more time doing that job to weld this thing back together, and Harriet Owen has now been absorbed. Yeah, now I'd really like to see Miami, Miami Knights rider, Denver Disruptor, you know, La Sweat rider really um, you know, take this opportunity to use that momentum and counterattack this move and just leave uh, LA Legion at the front at a high high speed. It looks like Kimberly Lucy is there. That's oh. Holly Breck. Oh, that is Holly. Yeah, so nice. So we have a nice shuffling there by the DNA team. 
where we had Kim Lucy initially covering and then Holly Breck countering and trying to draw out. Now, unfortunately, she was unable to get any, any gap, and so she is now checking the shoulder and seeing who else is going to go. And there we have a nice counterattack there by Denver Disruptors on the right-hand side. We've got a nice acceleration and two following across, and it looks like it is that blue Tulsa Tough jersey that I haven't been uh, able to identify yet this evening. She's not wearing a race number, but if we go through our Butcher Box crew, we've got Caitlin Agnew, Melanie Wong, Mackenzie Mayalt, and uh, Rachel Canning with Christina Goki Smith here tonight. And Jillian Bennett. I'm not sure if Jillian came to the start line, but if she is, in fact, on our start list, but you're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and we saw, you know, Holly do that counterattack. And yeah, there may not have been a, a gap established. It was she was just keeping the pace high, you know, just mm -hmm. keeping that single file. And if you can just keep kind of countering and make, keeping the pace high for longer, uh, you know, up the hill and it's single file and gaps still put, start to open, riders, you know, start start to have to work. Uh, we got some good news for you for Rachel Langdon. She just has road rash. She will be okay. Going to get her equipment sorted. We will see her on the start line tomorrow for Cry Baby Hill. So Rachel Langdon of DNA Pro Cycling, uh, who went down earlier in this contest and neutralized the race. She is okay. Just a bit of road rash. And she will restart tomorrow at Cry Baby Hill. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, I think, you know, like I was kind of surmised, guessed a little bit that, you know, she hit the deck and instead of just rushing up, you know, to, to get back in the race, kind of use some wisdom, some experience to say, hey, I got to feel like, let my body figure itself out, you know, not rush back on the bike and put myself or anybody else in a worse position. Um, and so it's really good to hear that that's the, that's the state right now. It shows a lot of uh, experience and maturity of a rider for that to happen. Valentina Scandalara uh, from Denver Disruptors is the rider on the front right now, putting in that big effort. And then our Tulsa Tough blue jersey. Uh, for Butcher Box is on the front now as well. I see the American Championship helmet there of Kendall Ryan. Yeah, uh, she's coming to the front of the race. Uh, you know, after last night, knowing Kendall that she's she's fired up, you yeah. know, um, and wants to prove a point, uh, very likely that, that team probably wants to prove a point that um, they're not going to leave it to chance. They're, they're, they're going to want to make sure that it's a, a big gap, a really fast finish, um, and maybe, you know, not really have to worry about um, a situation like that. Now we have a rider off the front with, I believe, Alexis Ryan bridging to that. Yeah, that's nice to see. A nice acceleration. Woo, look at that. It is Alexis. It looks like the body language of Skyler, maybe, uh, coming up on to this InstaFund rider. I'll try to get that in focus. It's with dangling chain, and that yes, looks to me like Skyler. Skyler. Yeah, so Skyler Schneider with nice smooth form using, and she's immediately on the wheel, right? She's not struggling her way across. She's immediately there, and then she uses that opportunity to now recover. She comes to the front. Let's see if she continues with the effort. Um, and just a brief recap with what Daniel was talking about. Uh, Kendall Ryan was relegated last night. She came across the finish line first, uh, but she was relegated to fourth place off the podium last night after the USA Cycling officials judged that she had hooked uh, her, uh, Olivia Cummin to the barriers inappropriately in the final turn. $100 preem with eight laps remaining. Eight laps to go with $100 preem on the line. InstaFund is on the front, but Skylar Schneider is second wheel. And it looks to me like uh, Miami Knights in, with Andrea Sear is now coming up and around. Andrea Sear with the uh, blonde hair and now out of the saddle aggressively getting after it. Andrea Sear leading ACC, but this is not an ACC night. She comes to us, she is a doctor. She's a uh, practicing sports medicine doctor. She's a background in cross country skiing from her uh, home state of Maine, now living in Chicago. So great to see her racing be nice and aggressive at the front. She represents Miami Knights, an NCL league team racing was, with us here tonight. That's a really well time attack. She attacked into a corner, put those riders that she's catching kind of in the middle of people to create some space. And then like I was saying earlier, make that stretch of road into the climb hard, single file. And that way, when it's you, you start going up the climb, it's single file and the gaps start to open. That's where you can really start to create. And now you can look just the field is starting to really get strung out and really some gaps um, starting to form. And we are all back together, though. There are no riders off the front. Technically, a little bit of a gap starting to open up there around 15th wheel. But this is also be a great opportunity for somebody to really 
uh, take another counter move, right? To get out of the saddle, try to counter this little bit of hesitation at the front. Yareli Salazar is your rider at the front patrolling. Now CCB coming to the front, but not really an attack, just sort of a lifting of the tempo, which is different than an actual attack. Yeah, there's a $100 premium line, so she may be thinking that's, you know, a, a goal for her to, to take that. But this is really a time we're really starting to see Legion come to the front of the race yeah. um, with, with all five riders uh, starting to get in a road to, to take to kind of take um, <laughs> take control of this stuff. Oh man, Skyler just like swept that hundred, or excuse me, Alexis just swept that hundred bucks up like it was nothing. So Alexis Ryan from Legion of Los Angeles just taking that money from Natalie Quinn from CCB presented by LLG. It's a lot of a lot of letters. <laughs> yeah, and this is, I mean, the, the CCB rider should just kind of see this opportunity to just kind of put her head down and make the most of this opportunity. It's a really good gap that was this formed. Now you know that one of the strongest teams in the race are not going to be chasing because they have Alexis up the road. So now it's in a position where a DNA uh, Miami Knights disruptors have to you know, make the decision to chase. And it's either you get across instantly or say, hey, we're going to take six laps to bring this back and, and catch it with a half lap to go. Yep. Nice counter move here right now. Let's see which jersey that is. It uh, looks to me like a D and That's Daphne. That's Daphne, nice. Alexis right on the wheel, and that CCB rider is starting to struggle. But if she can get there, if she can get in that draft in the downhill, she can have a long chance to recover by the time. You know, recover on the downhill in the draft, and it won't be her turn until somewhere around the start finish line. But Alexis, you know, has decided, you know, not to, you know, not to partake in this. So we got it's such a good gap that you know, I'd really like to see them go. And at this point, the CCB rider has to be all in. You know, it's her chance to kind of, you know, push the race in her direction, put her head down. And yeah, it may not be the ideal situation with those two riders not working as hard as you, but you know, it, she probably has a better chance in this situation of making something happen than just going all the way back to the field and having a reset. So it's Natalie Quinn for CCB, presented by L, uh, LLG, Daphne Caraganas for DNA Pro Cycling, and Alexis Ryan for Legion of Los Angeles. So you are three up the road with six laps now to go. So six to go now as they cross the start finish line. Six laps remaining. We're getting into the final odds here, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, but I like that Daphne's working. Her, her role right now is to keep this away and now put the pressure on Miami, Miami Knights, Denver Disruptors, LA Sweat. And if she can tire those teams out, that means their jersey holder, Olivia Cummings, has less people to fight with mm. coming to the finish, even if, if, if and when it does come back, right? So it's, she's doing a lot of work and maybe more work than Alexis, but the goal is to make these other teams chase that are going to be fighting, you know, Olivia for the wheel of Legion. Do you think so, Legion's going to contribute to the chase from behind? They don't have to, you know. Because um, Alexis can win. She won Athens this year. Yeah, and she's sitting on. You know, the communication is like, hey, don't rotate. You know, we've got two really fast finishers. It's not it's not your job. Right. And so as frustrating as that can be for a rider like Daphne, she's got to switch that off and just ride and keep that gap, gap out as wide as possible, put pressure on Miami Knights, you know, those other teams that are going to be fighting Olivia for the wheel of the Legion lead out. We just know that the Legion is going to happen. Olivia Cummins is going to be there. Yeah, and we, as they as the field passed Sound Pony there on the back straight, it went wide. It pear-shaped immediately. So Denver Disruptors was doing a lot of the lead of the chasing. They had four riders on the front there. But then as soon as they hit Sound Pony, maybe they saw the after party and were just like, oh my goodness, <laughs> what's going on? But uh, whatever happened in that field dynamic, it really changed. And it gave the breakaway just another second now. The field has more momentum downhill overall. They have more of an aerodynamic advantage. And it looks like to me that they are, even, maybe it's just the foreshortening of the lens, but it looks to me like they're bringing that back. Yeah, it's probably going to just kind of ebb and flow a little bit. And there's going to teams that going to, it's going to get it close enough where they're comfortable and say, okay, it's close enough that, uh, you know, one of us can jump across or, you know, what have you. So uh, we're probably might going to see this yo-yo as long as Daphne and the CCB rider continue to uh, rotate. But now we see Boutine yep. uh, from Miami Knights come over the top, use the momentum for the field and counterattack. So five laps to go, five laps to go. And you've got yourself... We got yourselves another move here. So Butine now coming up and by the Andrea, Andrea Butine. And it looks like the grimaces of the faces behind her as Holly Breck and Urza Kim Lucy trying to hold on 
It looks like Kim. Yeah, that's Kimberly Lucy uh, holding on to the wheel there of Andrea Butin as she just tries to really wind it up. Now, what's the strategy here for Miami Knights? It's Andrea Sear is a good finisher. Taylor Cook White could be a good finisher. Um, but they're not all together yet, and we're already at five laps to go. Yeah, but just kind of like we saw with the Legion chain, even though they were together, just keep the pace high. If it's single file and Andrea can just find herself on a wheel and not fighting anybody, that's exactly what she needs. She just needs a, a clean place to ride that, you know, nobody's fighting, and uh, she can she recover and get ready for the sprint. Now this butcher box rider um, using the hill to attack him and really press the pace. But everybody behind is going to be really careful. Legion is really lined up, and if gaps stop to open and they kind of look around and see that there's five of them, they, they could be able and, you know, put in a team time trial and if those five riders just start swapping off and there's 10 bike links, it's going to be a lot, a really, really big effort to bring that back. I uh, think so. One of our friends back home, the Mackenzie Mylot is the rider with the Butcher Box blue jersey on this evening. Mackenzie Mylot, your aggressive rider here in the blue jersey. She's the one currently on the front. She was the one who counterattacked up and around the outside. So thanks to our friends at home who have helped me out here uh, with identifying our rider in the blue jersey. McKinsey's season. having a great ride. I really like her style. She's going out there being punchy, putting herself forward, going and recovering, um, you know, just enough to feel fresh enough to go again. I really like that tactic. And, um, you know, she's just hoping that somebody else is going to match, you know, match that effort, get with her, and they can start rotating. So um, it seems, you know, kind of by her riding style tomorrow, you know, maybe more course suit or whatever, that punchy, riding well we're, we're gonna pay a lot more than uh of course today yeah four laps to go now four laps to go and we now have instafun on the front right now but with yo Ali salazar and denver disruptors now coming up and around up onto the hips there we also see alexi uh, ramirez from trinidad and tobago representing the pink helmets of miami blazers putting herself in a good position remember alexi races on the velodrome quite a lot she has some pan american hardware to show for it as well um, and she's won, obviously, she's the current national champion of Trinidad and Tobago. So she knows how to race bikes. And now we're at four laps to go. We'll, we'll see if she's able to sort of freelance her way. She only has one teammate in the mix. Um, so she's really going to have to surf these other organized uh, trains to try to get herself a result. I think in the next half lap or so, we're going to start to see a lot of blue, blue kits come to the front. we have got a nice separation here. Off the front by Denver Disruptors. Very late in the game. Think this has any opportunity to get themselves to the finish line first? Yeah, you never know. It depends how fresh they are. Um, and, and if this was kind of their tactic, hey, throw a long one, you know, at, at four to go. And this is a moment where Legion has to be careful in the energy they're going to expend. Because if they go too early, they might, you know, could have the chance of losing riders and leaving Kendall or Sam you know, isolated too far from the line. Okay. But it's the finesse of being okay, it's one rider. We've seen kind of the whole race, roughly how, how far one rider can get. It would give them that, that leash and then start to accelerate and, and keep control. We're now seeing Legion move themselves to the front. We're gonna get some ID on this Denver Disruptor as she comes through, but great move, great tactics here by Denver Disruptors to get themselves a nice, healthy advantage here very late in the game. This takes a lot of pressure off the rest of the Denver team, as Daniel was talking about in our other separations earlier in the contest. This rider is solo as she comes by us here. We'll grab her number as she comes by. We're now looking at three laps to go, three laps remaining in the contest, and it's Catherine Ruff. Erica Zavetta from my home state of Pennsylvania. Erica Zavetta racing very well right now to find herself off the front of this race in the St. Francis Tulsa Tough, the FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium. Second night of racing here for the St. Francis Tulsa Tough series of races last night. We were at Blue Dome tonight. We are in the Arts District and we are seeing some great races. The gaps are opening. We are counting out exactly what she's got, where she at. She's roughly 10 seconds, and it, it was really good time attack. The pace had been hard. Um, some of the girls from Legion had been racing, uh, you know, that they, they couldn't immediately get on it. They're going to have to really recover and slowly ramp up the pace. And I hope, you know, likely to see that maybe Denver just may kind of counter their their moves, you know, all the way to the finish line, uh, you know, from here on out. But now we have um, Kim Lucci bringing Olivia Cummins up on the right side uh, to just kind of get either behind or just kind of right next to the back of that Legion train. Yeah, now is the time for the organization to begin as we see Legion start to wind it up. This is a very calculated move. Again, we have Kendall at the back of the train with uh, 
Alexi Ramirez are on that wheel, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of fighting and jockeying for that. Up on the hips of Legion, you have DNA and Miami Knights. So all the other teams are waiting, but look at the gap. It is just absolutely evaporated. They, she just lost about eight seconds on that downhill. Yeah, like I said, if it's a little bit of a headwind and you, know, you don't keep momentum, or you're that really, you really start to feel fatigued, yeah, you can lose a lot of time there. And one rider by themselves on this course is a really, really big ask. Two laps to go, ladies and gentlemen. Harriet Owens tapping the hips, saying, get on my wheel, here we go, ladies, because this is go time. Two laps remaining, two laps to go as we get into the final odds of this race. Legion is on the front, Yareli Salazar on the, on the front, full gas right now, and everybody else lining up behind her on the hips is gonna be DNA Pro Cycling. They're gonna try to do a bit of a drag race if they can, Harriet Owens fighting for that last wheel of that Legion train, which is Kendall Ryan. Yeah, and they've, they've just created a space for Olivia Cummins to ride up to. Give her, you know, like we were saying earlier, your friends, your teammates are very helpful, even if they may not be in the ideal position. It's a wheel where you can get up and say, hey, I'm here, and they just kind of open up the wheel in front of them, and you don't have to fight for the wheel from behind. Now you have Harry Owen just coming up next to the train with Daphne and Olivia Cummins uh, right on the wheel there. So drag race, the and drag race up the hill. Yeah, drag race up the hill with a lap and a half to go. Daniel, now we're in the uh, final aughts of this race. And DNA only has three. Legion looks to me like they have four. Is And we may have some others getting in there. Where's the move? Are they, have DNA gone too early? Yeah, I mean, you just, you know, like we saw, they just need to ride next to the train. You know, I don't love that Harriet's just on the on the front here, push and win for the, the Legion train. She needs to be next to it, you know, again, turn for turn. Now, now Salazar got, you know, yes. five, 10 seconds of respite. That's enough to get them five, 10 seconds further up the hill or over the top, um, you know, for Sam and, and Kendall. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to agree even with my different experience in that Harriet just gave Yarelli a massive break there. And Yarelli now with one lap to go, ladies and gentlemen, one lap remaining for our final lap of the FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yareli Salazar on the front, really grinding it out, and she now will ease up as Skyler takes over the pace setting. Skyler Schneider on the front right now. Alexis Ryan will be second. You can see Alexis Ryan shouting to Skyler to stay or to go. That is the direction that it will be given, and their job right now, Daniel, is to keep their final rider safe and protected, prevent anybody else from coming up and around. Yeah, from here to the finish line is an acceleration. You don't want to plateau at speed. You want to just slowly go faster and faster. So from the bottom of this hill to the top, as, as hard as it is, you want to accelerate. You just don't want to go, boom, 30 miles an hour and hold it because you're likely to fade and you're giving a launch point to the people behind. You want to accelerate and go up, 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 up the hill. Wow, out of the saddle right now as they go by Sound Pony and then they're going to make this left-hand turn. There's one, two more left-hand turns to go and this field is single file. They are completely splitting a lot of the best sprinters in the country here tonight and they are doing what they can just to hold on to the Legion train as they come on down. The, now we have the final lead outs for a Legion of Los Angeles with Alexis Ryan on the front, really digging in. How is this gonna go? Daniel looks to me like I see Olivia coming right on the on the inside. Yeah, and, and as soon as Alexis gets to this corner, Sam's gonna go. And here we go, this is the final kick. There's the kick as we see uh, Sam and it uh, looks like Legion wants to go for a podium sweep to make up for last night. Kendall is there, Sam is there. As they come to the line, Kendall checks his shoulder one more time and Kendall Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. And excuse me, it is Samantha Schneider for shortening on the lens, got me there. Sam Schneider is your winner here tonight at the FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium. Yeah, that's what they tried to do yesterday and Olivia, you know, um, they, they came up a little short, and that's why Olivia got the position she did yesterday. But now they were able to rectify that really well. One, two there for Legion of Los Angeles, Samantha Schneider, and then Kendall Ryan going one, two here tonight. And re race looks like Andrea Sear may have gotten herself on the podium, and I think the pink jersey of Olivia Cummins also may have been up there. Those are all unofficial results, of course, but Sam Schneider coming to us as your champion here tonight. Great racing by Legion of Los Angeles. And we saw a lot of patience by that team. I thought that they did a nice job sort of allowing other teams to uh, race their race a little bit, but they always kept things in check throughout the night. Yeah, you know, they just kind of rode us, you know, kind of two different teams, a pocket of two, a pocket of three, 
and, and you know, just only was active when they absolutely kind of needed to be um, going in, going into the finish. And that was really textbook lead out um, from Skyler to, you know, again, make the hill as hard as possible, lock everybody into place. And if somebody with bad legs is five, six, you know, wheel and lets a gap open, it's, you know, it's steady. You can't move up or you have to do your sprint down the hill and then you have no sprint for the finish. We're going to take a look at the finish one more time on a replay here as we see just exactly how it played out. And there you have it. Oh, Kendall celebrating for Sam as they come across the line. It looks like we saw the pink jersey of Olivia coming coming across there for third. One more look at it as we are out of the saddle. Samantha Schneider had a perfect drop off there by Alexis Ryan as she comes to the front and Samantha Schneider your champion here tonight at the FC Tulsa Arts District Criterium, second night of racing for the St. Francis Tulsa Tough. Yeah, and that was a really good example of showing how much an impact and how much of a gap you can create or maintain by carrying momentum through that final corner. Textbook bike racing here tonight for, by Legion of Los Angeles. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We have our men's pro race coming up next. We have a lot of a lot more great bike racing on tap here tonight. My name is Gabe Lloyd. I'm joined by Daniel Holloway here in the broadcast booth. We hope you can come on down to the Arch District if you are here in Tulsa and otherwise do stick around on the live feed. Get yourself a fresh drink and some fresh pop.